everybody and welcome back. This is Adobe Illustrator for Cartographers and I'm Dr. Heath Robinson. We were just talking about different ways to create complex point symbols for our maps. What if we want to do something even more complex than just this a circle with a star in it? Uh, maybe we want to do some kind of castle or something. So what if we need a point symbol to represent where a castle is. Maybe let's create a tower. You can't do that inside analytical GIS software, but we can create some really fantastic tower symbols or whatever kind of symbol that we want in here inside Adobe Illustrator. For the heck of it, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're using vector art, and I know I mentioned that last time when I was talking about how you can scale up or down the different things that are here in Illustrator, and that means you can zoom into things, uh, and not worry about things getting pixelated, everything is still going to stay very sharp. It also means that when you're thinking about doing vector art, vector graphic design, all of the artistic components of your cartography, you can design objects by thinking of how uh, they are composed of other objects. So I want to do this tower right here, and let's do a very simple kind of tower, just a black tower, but kind of has the shape of a, of a medieval medieval tower. Well, I'm going to go over here to the rectangle tool and draw in the basic rectangle for the tower. And I want to make it black, so I'm going to fill it in black and I'm going to make sure that I've got no edge there. And again, it does not matter at this point when I'm drawing this symbol if I'm drawing one that's uh, really, really too big. Because, because it's vector, I can scale it right down and, or scale it up if I even needed to and make it just the right size for my map. So here I've got just the basic cylinder already that kind of looks like uh, the tower right here. I would really like for the tower to broaden at the base. Well, I'm going to use the line tool here and go to one of the paths here and I want it to come out at a 45 degree angle. If so if I hold down the shift key it will be sure that it's coming out at a 45 degree angle. Actually that looks like a bit too much for me. I would rather it come out at a little bit more shallow angle. And you'll notice with the different guidelines that are popping up I can make sure that it's right down there on the edge. So I just created this line right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pen tool. The pen tool allows me to very specifically control anchor points. When I hover over here, do you see the little slash that's right next to the anchor? That means that right next to the pen icon. That means I'm sitting exactly on top of that anchor point. And I want to click it because I want to continue this line that I've already drawn. So I'm going to click right there. So now I've got that anchor point. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put a new anchor point right on top of that corner and then I'm going to create an entire polygon by going right up here to that anchor point. Make sure you're right on it and now I've created a little triangle right there and you know what I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool and click on the inside to make it exactly jet black. I want to make that on the other side as well so my tower gets broad on both sides. So I'm going to click right there, take that little uh, triangle, say copy it, and then paste it. Now I've got a triangle right there and I'm going to drag it over there. I want to stick that triangle right there, but it's not perfect, you see. It's on the other side. That won't work. I need to reflect that. Fortunately, that's very easy to do. I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to go down to transform and then I'm going to go to reflect. And what I want to do is I want to reflect that shape over a vertical axis. So I'm going to go ahead and keep vertical checked since it's already checked in this particular dialog box. If you've got horizontal checked, check vertical and then say OK. Now check out what just happened. It flipped. It flipped exactly as if I had mirrored it over a vertical axis. That's exactly what I wanted to do. And now it's exactly this shape just on the other side and flipped around. Now I'm beginning to get this tower shape that I want. Uh, what else could I do? I want the tower to broaden at the top. So I'm going to draw another rectangle. Maybe right there. What I do want to do is make sure that this the base of the 
tower and the cylinder of the tower exactly how I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and group those. This is where I'm going to make a group of a group of a group and so forth. Now here's the top of the tower right there. I want to make sure that this is perfectly centered over this group. So I'm going to select both. Now notice that if I just click here, I've got the tower cylinder and the two uh, base pieces selected. I moved them a little bit. I'm going to go Control Z and move them back. And when I click on them, they all select because they are grouped. I'm going to hold down the Shift key and select that top piece and then make sure that they are horizontally aligned centered. It looks like they were pretty good. Let me again show you exactly what happens right there. And I want to make sure that this was right here on top of that. It doesn't look like it was. There we go. That'll be good enough right there. Now I've got this going on with this tower. I kind of want to make sure that they, I put another triangle in right here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab the line segment tool and I'm going to make sure that I'm right there on that anchor point and then drag over, sure, right there. Use my pen tool to go ahead and create this or complete this triangle and make it black using the eyedropper. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. And then I'm going to copy that. Do the same thing as far as the reflect goes. Transform, reflect over the vertical. Say OK. And now I've got that corner filled in. I, you know what? I, I want to nudge those over a little bit. I'm seeing a little bit of a gap right there, and I don't want that. Uh, so I'm going to ungroup those, and then I just want to make that. Whoop! I want to make that small little adjustment. So I'm going to use the nudge tool just to nudge that over. I'm going to use that set the keyboard and nudge that way with the keyboard, and that way everything looks nice and solid. And really, uh, this, this tower needs some crenellations here, so I want to draw those in. How would I draw in crenellations? Well, I'm going to use boxes here. I'm going to draw in a box right there, and then I probably want to copy that so that I'm not drawing a whole bunch of different boxes. Make sure they're all exactly the same size, and stack them up, and also make sure that they're perfectly aligned. This may also be... Mm, a great job. I'll fix that in a moment. For the distribute tool, I go ahead and put some crenellations in here. I've been sort of freehanding how they look. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. I want to make sure there's no, no gaps like that in here and no gaps right there. So I'm going to align that that way and align that the other way and then select all of those and distribute those to the center. Horizontal distribute center. That way they all line up nice and clean. I'm seeing those same gaps right here. Do you see those? I don't want that little line to be there. I think the best way to do that will be to extend this top piece down slightly and then adjust that particular node. This is a fantastic use of the soft select. I'm going to zoom in again over here because I really want this, that node to be right there on that. So I'm going to use soft select which will allow me to select that individual node and I'm going to put it right there. Okay, now it doesn't matter that that's overlapping because you're not going to see it because it's all black. I'm going to scroll over here and do the exact same thing to this side. I've got soft select on. That will let me manipulate the nodes. I'm going to drag that node. Whoop! And the wrong node selected. I got that node right there and I'm going to drag it right there. It kind of snaps to it. There. Now I'm going to zoom back out to see how my tower is going. I'm really liking the look of that. Uh, maybe my tower does need sort of a doorway though. Let's go ahead and put the doorway in and drag out a rectangle. Oh, before I do that, because I like that outline, I like that basic shape, 
I'm going to drag across it and I'm going to right click on everything and say group and that way that basic shape is completely grouped together so whenever I select it with the hard select it selects everything and moves it as a single piece that's going to be very very useful and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab the rectangle and I'm going to try to put it in a doorway maybe the doorway is white go ahead and make it no fill okay so right there I'm going to make sure that the door and everything else that was already grouped together is perfectly aligned to the center that's looking pretty good but what if I wanted the gateway there to have an arch that comes from here up so we've got kind of an arch look here well I can do that uh, I'm going to do that with the ellipse tool and I'm going to create a circle that is exactly the same diameter as that Try that uh, rectangle that I just created. And I'm going to set it exactly down on top of that. Now, see, that's just two different shapes. We're talking about combining shapes in order to create vector art. So I've got the rectangle and I've got the circle, but when I set them right on top of each other, they kind of give me my gate shape. Let me show you a couple of different things. I could group those together. That seems like a perfectly good thing to do, and there'd be no problem with that. That way, if I grab my door, it's one solid thing. Um, but I actually don't need all of the, I don't need the circle and the uh, try the rectangle there. I need both of them to just be one shape. I can do that with the Pathfinder tool. So I'm going to ungroup them. So you can see that I've got them ungrouped right here. And then I'm going to select both of those shapes, go to Pathfinder, and then go to Unite. Okay, this is Option Click to create a compound shape and add to the shape area. I'm going to click that and see what happens. Now, I hope you saw that. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to, you can see that I've got the circle there and you can also see the outline of the rectangle. But I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click the Unite tool and I want you to watch what happens. Now it's just one shape. It got rid of both of them and created just one shape of the outline of both. I didn't group them together. There's no longer any need to group them together because it's just one door shape. Okay, that's just the shape that it is now. It's the union of both of those. Okay, I'm going to undo that so I get my door back into the right place. And um, maybe I need uh, some windows. So I'm just going to put a couple of slots here. Uh, make those white or make that white. Maybe with the rounded end cap, I don't know if you'll be able to see them at this particular scale or not, but I put the rounded end cap on there and then maybe another slit right there and another slit right there. I'm going to grab all of those and I'm going to make sure that they are aligned on the line, align tool palette. Whoop, not that one. Uh, and then, oh, a distributed. So I've aligned them to the center, and then if I want to make sure they're distributed, I'll use the distribute center. It moved a little bit right there. Here, here, here. I'm going to group those together. And then I got three things here. I've got the whole black outline. I've got the window slots here, and then I've got the gate. I'm going to select all of them and make sure that they are aligned to the center right there. Depending on what size I want this symbol to be, maybe the windows need to be a little bit thicker. Well, hey, I kind of like the look of that. That looks pretty neat. It kind of looks like a little tower here. Good luck doing that in analytical GIS software. If you need a symbol like this inside of ArcGIS, you're kind of out of luck. You've got to have a software package like this in order to create it. I'm going to zoom back out to fit on screen. That probably is way too huge, particularly on this map when this represents an entire capital city. This is representing a fortress or a castle or something, I don't know. But because it's vector art, it doesn't matter. I can go to a range, tran or, uh, transform, excuse me, scale, and if I want it to be 50% of the size, I say 50%, and now I just scaled it down. Maybe I can go even further. Transform, scale, maybe make it 75% of that. 
Ah, yeah, sure. Maybe maybe I have little little towers like that uh, sitting on my map. So maybe you don't need castle towers. Maybe you need something else. That's no problem. You can draw whatever you want. When you're thinking about vector art and you're thinking about point symbols, think about the construction of what you're trying to draw just like I just did it right there using a combination of all these different geometric shapes and different layers and the Pathfinder tools to create the kind of point symbol that you're going to need. We'll do another point symbol uh, that's a little bit more complex and uses a little bit more shading, but also produces a tremendously neat effect next. <laughs>